Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So as some of you may know, uh, modern day driving experiences in modern day cars is something that's becoming more and more artificial and overall just less exciting for the driver. So what I've done is decided to buy something that's a little bit older, I'd say it's a bit of a modern classic. Um, so I mean here it is, it's my 1989 BMW 320i Touring. Okay guys, so hopefully that footage just showed you on the outside of it a little bit. Um, so some of you may know this is an E30 generation. So they made the E30s from 1982 to 1994. And as I said, it's a 320i. Um, it's the Touring model, so it's the longer one uh, with the extra boot space. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tourings and I mean estate cars in general. I think they look really cool. Um, and obviously you've got that added practicality as well. Um, so under the uh, bonnet we've got a 2 litre inline 6, so it's the M20 B20 engine and in stock form this makes about 129 horsepower and roughly 120 foot-pounds of torque. This particular car has a chip tune on it, um, it's just one of the ones that are sold on the E30 zone forums. Um, it boosts power by I think about 10 horsepower so it's not a massive increase but it's probably pushing out around 140 and I would imagine probably around 130 foot-pounds of torque as well. So uh, coming down to the front of the car, you can see this one is equipped with the headlight wash um, sort of system. So you've got a jet nozzle there and then you've got these two wipers. Um, to be honest, I haven't actually tested it on this car yet. I don't know if it works. Um, I can't imagine I would be using it that much, but it's a pretty cool feature to have and not many of them came with them. Also fitted to this car is the 15 inch uh, BMW BBS alloys. So these didn't come standard on this car. This actually came with a 14 inch um, set of alloys, which I do have but the previous owner fitted these 15 inch BBS um, and I mean they look great, I'm a big fan of them I think it's quite classic 1980s BMW as well so really pleased with those Okay so looking at the car from a side perspective you can see it's quite long but in reality it's not actually that long this is the amazing thing when you start looking at cars that are even just 20, 30 years old they're much much smaller than modern day cars this car is narrower than my JCW and it's only about 30 to 40 centimeters longer than it and that car is obviously a three-door hatchback um, it would be regarded as probably one of the smaller cars that you can buy these days so I mean it's amazing that this thing is a five-door touring five-seat estate car um, you know and it's barely bigger than it okay so moving around to the rear of the car um, obviously it's got the classic touring tailgate um, and this classic design here. I mean there was a rumour um, that they actually made this the width of a beer crate so they could put beer crates in the in the boot. Whether that's true or not I don't know. Um, but yeah it's pretty cool and obviously massive boot we've got a lot of camera stuff in there at the moment but uh, plenty of boot space in there should you need it. It's also got the uh, twin exit exhaust. I don't think this is standard. Um, it looks slightly aftermarket but not for sound it's just not a quite a, um, an OEM design. You can also see the car comes with mud flaps. I'm not a massive fan of mud flaps in general, but to be fair, I think they look really good on this car and they really suit the style. So I'm gonna keep them there for now. I might remove them further down the line just to see what it looks like, but for the time being, they're gonna stay. So obviously being the 320i, this car is rear wheel drive, which is another reason why I bought it. Um, quite fancy the rear wheel drive car. Um, obviously UK insurance prices mean for younger people, it tends to be quite difficult to get into them. So this will be my first rear wheel drive car. Uh, so that'll be pretty cool. It's only an open differential. Um, some of these did come with a limited slip differential from factory i believe that was the is models um, but obviously this is just a 320i so it doesn't have the limited slip diff so overall the car is pretty solid there's a few rust spots on it but it's mostly just surface rust there's no real rot so those are going to be areas that i'm going to address pretty soon 
Um, and I mean, this car is garage, so it's you know it's going to be kept in the dry anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the paint the paint is probably the, one of the worst things on the car. It's not too bad, but there's obviously some scratch marks on it. To be honest, it kind of looks like someone's gone at it with a scourer. Um, so it's a little bit flat in places and there's some definite scratch marks that you can see. So, I mean, it's, it's the original paint, so it'd obviously be pretty cool to uh, try and restore that and bring it back to life a bit. Okay, so obviously one of the standout features on the E30 is, is this bonnet. Um, look how it opens, it's pretty cool. Um, you don't really see that, you know, too much these days. So, yeah, it's quite a cool feature. So, I mean, looking underneath, as I mentioned, it's got a two litre inline six. Uh, BMW code is M20 B20. Um, the M20 engines were used across the range. Uh, they had a 320i, obviously the 325i. Um, they did the 325e, which I believe was only sold in America, and that was, well, more or less focused around economy. Um, but yeah, it's a two litre inline six. So that's quite an interesting thing, obviously. These days, six under engines, very rarely less than three liters um, in capacity. So it's quite cool to have a two liter, a two liter inline six. Um, it's not got loads of torque. The torque comes in at about 4,000 RPM. So you do have to rev it out. And peak power is coming in at about 6,000. Um, so it's quite a revy engine. And with that chip tune on, it revs to, I think about six and a half thousand is the limiter. So it does, nice to, uh, it does really like to rev out. Okay, so I mean, looking on the interior of the car, it's, it's pretty damn clean, to be honest. Um, 30 years old, the carpet's a little bit worn out. Um, but I mean, overall, I mean, the seats are pretty good condition. We've got a nice steering wheel, nice thin rim as well, which is something that's disappearing fast, especially on the newer BMWs. They're just making them stupidly thick. Like, you can't actually grab the wheel. It's kind of a strange thing to do. Uh, but I like the nice analog dials. Everything works on this car electronically as well. We've got electronic windows on the front. We've got electronic adjustable mirrors, which is really cool as well. And also these cars came with a check control system, which checks a whole bunch of things. Brake lights, uh, the headlights, engine oil, washer fluid, coolant, all that kind of stuff. And you can check these when you start the car, which is pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, yeah, overall, it's a really nice place to be. The seating position is brilliant, nice and low, uh, perfect distance from the wheel. And I mean, the pedal position is great as well. You've got the brake pedal very close to the accelerator. So those heel and toes come across really nice. Everything is angled towards the driver in this car. That's one thing you know, it's a proper driver's car. This is how BMWs were meant to be. They were made for the driver. Um, and once you start going back into the E30 generations, and I mean, even up to sort of the E92 generation three series, they were proper driver's cars. I'm not saying that the newer ones aren't, but you can see how much attention to detail went into making these for the driver. We've got all the stuff angled towards you. This whole central column and central console unit is just angled towards me in this driver's seat, which is great. Okay guys, so that's all it's gonna be for this video. Um, basically, there's a couple of things I wanna do with the car before I do a full in-depth review and some other videos on it. It's kind of due a timing belt change and the reason it's not you know, fully due one is because it was done within the mileage limit that BMW set, but I just wanna change it to be on the safe side. Um, so that's one of the things I'm gonna be addressing quite soon and then next couple of months, I'll hopefully get a good in-depth review on this thing. Um, but I'm interested to know if any of you guys wanna see any of the work I'm gonna do on this in a separate video. Comment below if you do, and we'll try to film as much as we can, as much as we can of that um, and put it up on the channel because it might be interesting to some of you um, if you own E30s. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's given you a bit of uh, an overview of the E30 and sort of helped to tell why I bought it. Um, yeah, there'll be plenty of stuff to come on this thing. Uh, plan to keep it for a long time. It's not going to be a short short ownership. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.